and we have distinguished two different approaches which are quantitative and qualitative. So quantitative uh, can be uh, distinguished between explanatory and time series. Explanatory means that uh, you try to predict, to forecast, to manage the demand uh, according to uh, other variable. So looking at the trend and characteristic of other variable, while time series uh, just try to predict uh, demand, to manage demand according to past value of, uh, of this demand. And uh, uh, both of these uh, uh, assume that uh, uh, the future can be explained by looking at the past. So a past which can refer to uh, the same uh, value of the demand or other values of different variables, but still uh, values that can be uh, have been registered in the past. Well, instead, when uh, this is not true, or when uh, I don't have data to do that, uh, I can use uh, qualitative technique. Qualitative te te technique instead uh, are based on people, people judgment, and this judgment can be individual, so I reach out uh, individual which are expert, which are, uh, um, which are knowledgeable of uh, uh, the demand that I want to manage, and I ask them uh, some uh, prediction, some forecasting about demand and how this should be managed, or uh, on interaction. So I uh, reunite these different people of different nature and uh, uh, I force them uh, to discuss and to come out uh, with uh, uh, an idea of uh, which will be the forecasting of the demand and way to manage uh, this uh, exogenous, uh, exogenous variable. Um, when, I mean, once the system is in place, so I have decided the level of aggregation, I have decided the, um, the uh, tools and the technique that I want to put in place to manage the demand, uh, then uh, I need to be sure that uh, my demand management process is working, uh, uh, is, is working properly. And at this regard, we have seen that uh, uh, we can measure two different areas of performance of my uh, demand management process. On one side, uh, we have what is called bias or systematic error. The bias is a measurement of uh, uh, the existence of a systematic trend uh, in being wrong in demand management. And uh, that's the, the example. So uh, if we're referring to forecasting in this case, uh, uh, bias means uh, uh, verifying if uh, my demand management activities uh, are systematically overestimating or underestimating the demand. So I'm not interested in uh, how much is the different bis difference bis between uh, the real value and the actual and the forecast value, I'm just interested in understanding if uh, there is a trend in this difference. So uh, always uh, higher than demand, always lower of the demand. The fact that uh, the spread between the actual value and the, and the forecast value is instead me measured through accuracy. Accuracy instead measures the closeness of the measurements uh, or estimate to the true value. You see here? Accuracy, accuracy uh, performance management uh, indicator uh, measure how much my forecast uh, is different from uh, uh, the real uh, the real demand. So I'm measuring uh, how much I'm able to hit uh, uh, the real uh, the real number. These are the indicators that we have seen as characteristic of bias and accuracy. So uh, bias is measured by the average of uh, the error with sign. So calculation of the difference between the forecast in the period T and the demand in the period T for all the period that uh, uh, I'm interested to, to keep under the scope um, ratio with N, the total number of periods. This is a number, and uh, this may be expressed also in percentage uh, if uh, instead of just calculating the error uh, with, with sign like this, uh, I make the ratio with the, the total value of the demand in each period. Uh, so this is mean percentage error and bias for measurement of the systematic error. Where instead, if I'm interested in measuring the accuracy, I can calculate the mean absolute deviation, which is the error uh, of uh, the forecast uh, 
uh, we in absolute value. So for each period, I measure uh, forecast, the difference between the forecast and the demand uh, in absolute value for every period, and then I average the sum of this value. So I obtain the average of the error forecasting uh, uh, in absolute value, and again, uh, I can make the mean absolute percentage error uh, by, uh, instead of just making the difference between uh, the forecast and the demand uh, uh, with sign, I make the difference between the forecast and the demand uh, in absolute value divided by the demand, uh, and then I make the average. So this is a number, this is a percentage. Besides this, which are the main indicator for accuracy, I can also calculate the mean square error, which is uh, the variance of the error, so the difference between uh, the forecast and the demand uh, squared in order to enhance big uh, different uh, difference between the two, and then making the average, I obtain uh, uh, exactly the expression of the variance. If I square this value, I obtain the root mean square error, which is the standard deviation of the forecast error, which is then telling me, uh, on average, uh, which is the confidence interval of uh, my forecast. So whenever I forecast something, uh, uh, I know that uh, my forecast can be, um, can be different on plus minus the root mean. We have also uh, seen a very, very uh, short example of uh, uh, the of application of calculation of uh, the the, uh, the forecast uh, uh, the demand management uh, um, performance indicators uh, uh, which uh, you see displayed here so these are uh, the an overview of uh, the main indicators and their meaning uh, this is uh, the demand uh, uh, series so we have just four periods, like uh, three months per, per year. Uh, this is the forecast and this is the demand. So the first things we have to do is to calculate the difference between the forecast and the demand, which is, uh, as you see displayed here, the difference between these two values. Calculate this, you drag and drop, and uh, you have for each period the error measurement. If you make the average, so if you average this value, you obtain what is called bias. If you do the same, just by dividing uh, for the demand, so this value divided by the demand, you obtain uh, a value in percentage. You do this for every period, and you then square, you then average the obtained value, you have the mean percentage error. And these are the indicator of bias. So in our case, uh, we are overestimating the demand of 12.5 units on average, or 13%, according to the level of the demand. Uh, the level of the demand. If I want to evaluate the accuracy, I need instead to evaluate the uh, the evaluate the uh, error with sign, which is uh, this value exactly the same value with. Uh, 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 without uh, the minus in front, so uh, all positive values. So we are we are taking we are just considering the absolute value. So 20, 20, 150. If I average the previous one, you see that uh, mean absolute deviation is 47.5. Uh, and uh, if I calculate this value with the demand, uh, I just express this in terms of percentage. Again, we are not just overestimating the demand, but we are also inaccurate in doing that because on average we are wrong on 47.5 unit, which is 24% is compared to the average value of, of the demand. I can also calculate the variance and the root mean square, uh, square uh, error. Um, by doing that, uh, I just have to uh, square the value of the error for each period and then make the average. So we have a variance or a mean square error of uh, 3325, uh, which square root uh, means, uh, uh, let's say, a standard deviation on a forecast of uh, 57 units, 58 units, if you want to round this value. So it means that every time I make a forecast, like for example in this period, the forecast of period 4 is 350 plus minus uh, 58 units. 
okay? We can also express the root mean percentile square error if you want to obtain, uh, if we want to obtain uh, uh, this instead of uh, thousand value in this case, which make few sense uh, in percentage. So I just, uh, uh, I just uh, uh, elevate at, at, uh, at, I just square uh, the value here and I obtain uh, that the variance of my error is 34, 34%. So that was a very simple example of how to calculate uh, uh, some main indicators related to the demand management uh, uh, process and the demand forecasting. We have also seen that uh, uh, demand management and demand forecasting requires uh, effort uh, from the company and uh, requires time to be spent in deciding the level of aggregation, deciding the model, in the, uh, hiring people and so on. So we are interested that uh, uh, our uh, model, which comes from in-depth analysis and uh, uh, effort and timing spent on that, uh, perform uh, better than uh, uh, the very, the most basic choice. In demand forecasting, the most basic, basic choice is implementing uh, for demand management and forecasting what is called a naive method. The naive method assumes that the forecast for the next period will be equal to the actual figure. So forecast in the next period equals to the demand on uh, uh, this uh, actual, uh, this, current, uh, uh, this current period. So that's the, how a naive model look like uh, compared to the actual demand. So you see that for every period, uh, the forecast is exactly the value of uh, the demand in the previous period. Uh, of course, this is a zero, invest, a zero investment model, and we are interested that uh, uh, the error that I obtain with this model is uh, at least worse than the error that I obtain uh, uh, with the model that I'm actually implementing. This indicator is called uh, uh, relative absolute error. So it's the ratio between uh, the error obtained with my model and the error obtained with the naive model. Of course, I'm interested that uh, this value is uh, as mm, as lower as lower than one as possible. So, uh, possibly near zero. If not, uh, there is something that is not going on properly on uh, uh, in my uh, in my demand management. So let's see how uh, this uh, indicator calculation apply to the um, San Pellegrino case. So here you have the column that you need to calculate your indicator. And the first things you have to do is to calculate uh, the error. So the difference between uh, the forecast and the demand. Then you drag down and once you have calculated that, you can calculate the bias. The bias is an estimation of the systematicity, systematicity of the error in overestimating or underestimating the demand. 21 means that there is, on average, a 21 estimation on, uh, on uh, the unit uh, of, of forecast, which are again a lot of uh, six, uh, six cans. If you go back to the univariate statistic, uh, you remember that uh, the average was 1079 unit. Again, it's up to you to understand if 21 is enough to claim a existence of a positive bias, or again, if you make this 21 divided 1079 is 2%, uh, so maybe not too much to, 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 to claim the existence of, uh, of a bias. You do the same uh, with model 2. You do the same with model 2. and you obtain minus 73, which is uh, 7% of, uh, uh, of uh, compared to the mean. In this case, uh, again, um, 
this is slightly higher is almost 100 so it's almost 10 percent so we can generally say that uh, the negative bias is more present uh, for model 2 than the positive bias is present for model 1 but again overall this doesn't seem to be a big problem the bias uh, because again as we discussed error uh, compensate within each other and so uh, positive uh, uh, error uh, then are compensated and balanced by negative error for for both models. Uh, again, to, to see, to correct this, uh, this, uh, uh, this view uh, for what concerns the, 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 the balance of the positive and the negative, we should calculate uh, the absolute value of uh, the error In this case, we can see that, uh, of course, remember to eliminate the uh, the value which is which are uh, equal to 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 zero. But anyway, uh, if you look at that uh, now, you see that uh, uh, the mean absolute deviation, which is uh, the value of the error, uh, not not like not considering the sign of the error, because again. Uh, overestimating or underestimating is still an error, uh, show uh, like still a huge, uh, again, impact because, again, uh, for 472 divided uh, 1079 is 43%, uh, and uh, 414 divided 1079 is uh, an error which is. Uh, 44% and 48% of the mean of the event. So it's very high, but again, in this case, uh the uh, the uh, the model one uh, is preferable because uh, it commits an error which is uh, low in magnitude, uh, not considering not considering the sign. We are also interested in understanding which is the dispersion of uh, this uh, uh, of this error, and to do that, uh, we calculate. Uh, the error squared to obtain the, the mean squared error for both model. Again, as we discussed, uh, the value of the error square is like uh, the value of the error squared is like uh, the variance. Uh, of a standard of, of a, um, is like the variance of a, a distribution. So we can calculate the uh, mean square error. You see here the root, the mean square error doesn't have a real interpretation because uh, uh, it's, it doesn't have a, like a, a, an understandable unit of measure. What has uh, an interpretation is the root mean square error, which is the square root of the mean square error, which tells us the dispersion of, uh, uh, of, the, of the error values uh, around uh, the mean absolute deviation. And in particular, you see that uh, the mean absolute deviation, so the, 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 the average error not considering the sign is 472 here and 514 uh, one, here, but then uh, the root mean square error, so the standard deviation of the error is plus minus 634 here and 693 here. Again, also in this case, uh, uh, the suggestion is that the dispersion, despite very high, because if you calculate the, the relationship with the mean, the dispersion is uh, Fifty-eight percent, fifty-nine percent of the mean uh, for of the mean of the demand uh, for the uh, for model one, and sixty-four percent of the mean of the demand for model two. Again, also in this case, uh, considering the value of the unit, uh, uh, model one is preferable. Model one doesn't have uh, a clear bias, uh, is better in terms of mean absolute deviation, and it's better in terms of uh, root mean square error. Um, we have also seen that we can calculate these, uh, these uh, indicators in percentage. So simply, in this case, uh, you relate uh, 
the error the error divided by the demand. So in this case means that I am wrong in estimating 28% out of the total demand is 3%. If you calculate that, again, pay attention to the zero value, so eliminate the zero value. Okay, now we are fine, and you can see that, uh, and you do that the same for the demand. You do the same for model two. Pay attention also in this case to eliminate the zero value where whenever they appear. Here we are. You can see that uh, is 191 for model one and 177 for model two. So in this case, uh, it's slightly better model two compared to uh, to model one. And you can do then the same stuff uh, to calculate the percentage of the mean absolute deviation, which is called mean absolute percentage error. And again, also in this case, uh, the model one is slightly worse. Uh, model two is slightly better. Model one is slightly worse in terms of uh, error committed. Again, the percentage here is like these values are very like bad. I don't know if you if you get it, uh, but in the like worse situation, model two is still slightly uh, slightly uh, better. Uh, cal let's calculate the. error in percentage here we are in terms in terms of uh, root means um, square percentage error you can see that the difference is more uh, is more important so we have uh, 74 percent points difference between other one and model two and again as explained in class uh, even if we have mixed indication with the mean percentage error and uh, mean absolute percentage error the big different in big difference in the dispersion of the error values uh, uh, also using the percentage approach uh, make us uh, prefer the usage of uh, model one on top of model two um, anyway before saying okay let's use model one compared to model two i've told you let's go for a comparison with uh, uh, a comparison with the naive model so basically uh, you build the naive model which is again uh, the model let's say that in every period uh, the forecast uh, is no other than the, the demand experience in the previous period so this is the, like the series that you will obtain by implementing the forecast model a forecast model using a naive approach. If you calculate the same indicator for the naive model, again the formula are still the same, you obtain this column and as you can see like this indicator are slightly better than uh, all the indicators that we have calculated for model one. So in this case, uh, we see that the implementation of a very basic model, like the naive one, uh, is better than using an higher computational model as model one and model two. So it means that something needs to be rediscussed and revised because, again, a cost zero model gives better performance that instead of a time-consuming and high-maintenance model uh, realized by your demand planning department.